in 500 mo in 500 mo in 500 mo it's tot the top three are here you know what i'm saying and we are here to discuss the new orleans pelicans how y'all feel how y'all feel great yeah i mean thanks for 500 we're trying to get to 1k now so if you're new subscribe if you're a fan of this video but um pelicans Playing unbelievable ball in their last 10 games. They are fourth in offense and second in defense, just playing championship level basketball. If you're top five in both, you're a championship contender to me throughout the whole season, but you're playing it in this 10 game stretch and you're getting hot at the right time. If you can maintain this come playoff time and you, it's looking like you're probably going to get the Clippers in round one, barring anything crazy collapse from either side or one streaking or whatever, but you're going to get the Clippers round one. And that's a matchup I would like to watch. No doubt. But, yeah, we're just going to talk about what the Pelicans have been doing recently, and, yeah, let's get right into it. Finn, I know you are pretty strong, high on them right now. I just want to say something about Big Z real quick before we get into it. Uh, first of all, like I said in tears, if you guys didn't see the tears, go watch tears this week. He's in unk mode right now. The way he's talking, the way he's he's just acting, he's, he's fully in his bag. And if you're a hooper, try and visualize this for a second with me. The way that he floats through the lane on these layups, absorbs contact, double pumps or whatever – and lays the ball up so that it, it's like he's on top of the rim almost and just kind of drops it on the backboard. It never touches the rim. Um, it's it's like art, dude. This is why I said before the year started he could potentially be a top five offensive player if he was consistent and in shape. It's just an unstoppable force. He's just dominant, so strong, so controlled in the air. He has great control of his body. He doesn't rub me as someone who would land wrong and get injured. I know – Everybody's he's been there. injured. He's been know, injured. I'm saying, I'm saying, I know everybody has, like, he's, he's been injured, whatever. But the way that he moves, if I was watching a game for the first time and I'd never seen him, he looks very under control. And I just like the way that he cuts through the lane and he gets so high on these finishes. He doesn't need to punch out for me. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Like, he just there's definitely there's, it in there. There's yeah. times for it and there's times to not use it. And, He's so high at the rim where he can just lay it in as if it was a dunk, basically. But there's times when there's a big in lane and you just have to get it through his arm fast enough and where you have to dunk it instead of trying to flip it around and get a lay. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, Slim, do you want me to steal your stat here? Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Slim sent this one in the chat earlier. Uh, since February 1st, Zion has taken 200 shots at the rim, shooting 65%. So, I mean, like... As a guy that's six foot six, six seven on the max to me, well, also the guys that are also shooting in the top five for field goal attempts at the rim are Giannis, Jared Allen, and Sabonis. Get the message? They're all centers. Would have loved to have seen big clacks on that list like last year, but it's all right. We'll move on. <laughs> I mean, they're all shooting a higher percentage than Zion, but they're also not driving from the three point line and absorbing contact. Like they're just getting dunks. So, like, unreal body control. And I, I think that uh, has something to, you know, do with his IQ as well. I think the way that we talk about Anthony Edwards and his uh, killer mentality and the way that he's able to, you know, go out there, execute, and, uh, you know, make a play happen in the clutch, I think that Zion is just as one of those players. And, you know, I don't like to compare, but um, – I, I'm very high Zion right now, even over Anthony Edwards. And, you know, I'm high on Ant right now as well. Yeah, no, I mean, like, it's just one of those things where when you watch this team, if you've watched even just the highlight videos on YouTube, because, like, I know, I'm not watching every single Pelicans game. I try and watch as much as I can, but I'm not watching every single one. But, like, in the games that I saw, I mean, it was a rough game when they played the Cavs, but I saw that one. Zion was unstoppable. I know we didn't have Evan Mobley, and while I think like you would think of him, that would be a good matchup for the Cavs. Evan Mobley's too light. Wow, so he would toothpick him. So, yeah, Zion would run right through him. And Zion's given the Cavs problems in the past, and he gave him problems again. Like, And just in the highlight videos, they're all – like when he posts up, it's either, okay, I'm going to get a mismatch, and as soon as they double, I'm passing. And it's also one of those things where Zion's played a full season now. So this is his first – to me, his real full first season as like – not being like not un not understanding the game but just through playing you learn so much more about the game while being on the floor you can't just only watch film because it's impossible to get the feel and the pace and everything like that live when reps you're, when you're out there you get to see it and you become smarter at what you're doing that's why people like lebron have played for so long and never really had major injuries are so smart at like just diagnosing the game 
And Zion's, I think, is starting to figure that out. Now, we saw it with a guy even just as from first to second year. Paolo and Jalen Williams both look tremendous now because they're starting to understand the NBA game a lot more compared to coming in as a rookie and just trying to figure it out. Keegan have, Murray. Like, there's just guys that are figuring it out right now, and Zion's one of them. And that's what's, to me, the real reason why the Pelicans are moving up the ranks. And, I mean, I don't know if I said it earlier, dropped 25 pounds. So, like, yeah. that's a huge thing. Yeah. Stay. Not only does that help his game, but that also just shows he's dedicated to the squad, dude. You're doing that not – I mean, you're doing that for yourself. You're trying to get a check. But you're trying to win games, and you're trying to help the team, and that's putting mind over matter. 100%. If you listen to his press conference, he, he loves the game. And, you know, he wants to compete. He wants to, you know, win. And I think that that's what separates him from, you know, any any other competition, you know, I would say within his conferences. I think that Zion has a different motor. Everybody has been, you know, having these expectations of him. So for this season, for him to be the healthiest that we've seen and for him to, you know, drop that, you know, much amount of weight, I said that I can tell a difference in his game in regards to stamina, in regards to, you know, being able to be consistent with attacking the basket as much as he does, you know, averaging like 200 since February, 64% more than Giannis, more than anybody else, you know what I'm saying? And I think that for you to be that aggressive, you know, it shows con like a continuous effort and then I, I know he's conscious of that. We know, like, that's his game. And Coach Willie is going to let him rock out. And then he has other options. We're starting to see more of his facilitation. You know, he could hit okay. CJ, BI, you know. Yeah, we'll list talk about them right now. You know? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we'll go from – we'll talk about BI a little bit here, and then we'll go into kind of the supporting cast, the unsung heroes that guys on national media when they watch the game don't really mention for more than a minute or two. But, yeah, I mean, Brandon Ingram's just – Finn, you can go into it because this is your kind of style of NBA player, but he's he really can get he's he's a pick your spots guy, scores on multiple levels, but he knows where he wants to get. It's it's cones. He's playing against cones. I gotta get uh whatever short corner. I gotta get free throw line extended. I gotta get into this spot in my mid range. I know, you know what that number. is. I don't mean to cut you off, but like there's there's only a little bit of that left. But that's that's the direct like lineage of hooping with Kobe. You know what I'm saying? When you come into the league and you get to hoop with Kobe Bryant, you you see the game from a different perspective. Like in those spots, getting to your spots, getting to these little you know small details on the court for you to you know be as precise as we see Bi is. But continue. I just want. But to what it comes it. down to is why Matt said I love him. Dude, he's a bucket. He's that an absolute cool. bucket. And, and like I said in the Tears video, in the past, when Hoopers let themselves go, hair gets long, beard gets long, uh, you know they're locked in because they're not paying attention to how they look. They're not paying attention. I got to go to this barber. I got to go to this club. Like, I'm trying to win games tonight. I'm trying to win games in two days. And I'm trying to win games in five days. And that dude is locked in. Yeah, no, I mean, Brandon Ingram's having – I would say, like, I know the numbers might not be his best season ever. But to me, as an eye test thing, he just looks like he's – They've the Pelicans, to me, have always been a team – How old is he? 25? 20, 20, 27? 28, maybe 29? No, 28. Uh, 27 might be right. 27, but, 28? Um, he just looks like he's fitting into the team right now. And, like, that's a thing that I worry with those kind of style of players like that where they're just so buckets that sometimes they just kind of have to ISO. But, like, he's fitting into the flow of the offense while getting these shots, which I think is just a huge, huge upgrade for the Pelicans and why we're seeing them be really, really good. Um, B.I. over P.G. for me. I'm a Paul George stand, so can't really give him up there, but it's close. It's close. Um, let's go into some, kind of the unsung heroes. Underrated I mean, weak side defender. Facts. But, um, yeah, let's go into the unsung heroes. I mean, the two guys that obviously stick out to everyone are Herb Jones and Trey Murphy. The two length guys that, I mean, Herb Jones is, he's one of those guys that you put on an all defensive team, not only because his reputation, First. Up, but because of how good he is on he defense. He clamps for stars. Yeah, every he's night. Sweet. Every night. 
He guards and, the best player every night. That's what I was about to say. To be the guy that coach that probably coach isn't even saying he's probably taking it upon himself, but to be the guy that's like, I'm gonna guard the best player tonight, just got big ups for that. And this is what we were talking about with the Clippers. You know, that'd be an interesting matchup to see. Any of these guard heavy teams in the West, like they they are coming. They're poking, they're picking pockets, they're pulling out chairs, like they're savvy defenders as as long as much as they are long and quick. They know the game, they know spots to beat uh your guy too. So like I've seen Herb Jones in his sophomore year, maybe it was his third year or whatever. I forget what it was. Lock up KD, and I was tight as fuck. Like <laughs> it, it happened, and I was tight. Yeah, the boy, and- the boys are very tough. You know, uh, shout out to Herb, shout out to Trey, uh, some more unsung heroes. I feel like Najee Marshall is in that camp as well. Uh, you know, can't, GTA, yeah, GTA. Can't forget to mention. Uh, I like Dyson Daniels, but um, you know CJ CJ McCollum is is gonna do his thing, you know, on on we, offense, we, and, and he's not a bad defender as well. You know, we got to do a minute on CJ real quick. Yeah, let me just make one thing clear about Herb Jones. Obviously, the defense has been there since he was drafted three years ago, but the difference is now he's an actual spacer. Um, I'm looking yeah, at his career. I'm looking at his career numbers. Started off coming in just under 34%. Same thing in the following year. This season, he's up to 34%, shooting four threes a game. So the volume's not crazy. But if you think of a guy where you're coming out of the draft, you're like, oh, he's potential to be a 3 and D wing. He is becoming the prototypical 3 and D wing right now. There's a couple guys around the league that are doing it, but not many are doing it as well as Herb Jones. And so, Trey Murphy's doing it the opposite way. He's shooting the shit out of the ball, but he's the defense is on its way right now. But is he ahead. the the Isaac Coro of the West? Yeah, I mean Isaac Coro is just a guy that obviously I'm a Cavs fan, but that's the guy that's done it. Who's over forty percent now? Who's should also be an all defensive first team? I don't know if he's going to get it because of the reputation in past seasons. Like, like he's always been a good defender, but that's not the topic of this video. Let's talk CJ. Let's talk CJ McCollum because just the veteran that you need on your team. Just one of those guys that you just want. Locker room guy. Yeah. Vet, big vet, big vet, big vet. Keeps young guys in line, shows young guys how to be professional. He always has been. Um, He can still chop it up and be cool from what I've seen from interviews and and witness accounts and podcasts and whatever. But he's down to get down to business. He's down to work out at 5 a.m. Like he's a gym rat. Um, And he's a bucket too, especially if he doesn't have to isolate as much, which he still can. He's not 90 years old. But if B.I. is handling the isolation, he gets doubled, and you have C.J. as a spot-up shooter, he's not going to miss much. So No, I mean, he's coming off a game 30-8. and eight, So, yeah, like I was going to say, a leader, you know what I'm saying? Not just vocally, but not that Zion, you know, will need any help, but this is what teammates are for, you know. We know Zion can hold his own and get a bucket when a bucket is needed. Same thing with B.I., but, you know, B.I. And, and Z can look to C.J., you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, you know, may look to C.J., you know, for a specific play, for a specific bucket when they need it. And, you know, if there's a if there's a cat that I, that I need to trust taking the last shot, I may put it in C.J.'s hands before B, B.I. or Z or Zion. Depending on how the night's going. Like, that's how much of a good of shot maker he is. Like, you could right. give it to him, and I would feel fine with it. But – yeah, I mean, any other final comments before we wrap this up? But I mean, I'm interested to watch them continue to play. They've had a spot on my radar ever since the opening game, opening day of that uh, 2023 or 2022 Nets season when they beat the dog shit out of us. That was last year. So, always on yeah. my radar. Yeah, no, Pell's playing great ball. I hope it continues. They're they're one of those teams that I would love to see go deep in the playoffs. I hope I want them to be there. I want the hate on Zion to kind of end because I know the national media has kind of flipped on them. So. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Bring us to 1K.